The time is now. It's the final stop of the regular season, and that road to the first ever PBR Teams Championship runs right through Glendale, Arizona. Direction! Not a problem from Joao tonight. What a way to get rolling on a Friday night. The Rattlers are on the board. We talk a lot about feeding him bulls that go into his hand, but guys, you got to remember how consistent he's been year after year after year. He's been a contender for a world title, and you don't contend for a gold buckle being one-dimensional. He can do it all. Yeah, he's definitely not one-dimensional. JRV stepping up in a big way for the Rattlers. 83 and three quarters gets Texas on the board early. And Flint, in a sense, instantly is going to put Carolina on the defense to make a move. Hey, it, you know, you guys might have missed it, but when that ball acted up and he was already on the clock, it popped Joao in the chin, and he did not want to nod. His look in the eye was not one that was ready, but he was forced to nod. And if he can start it, they can keep it moving. Supplemental superstar shines right here on a Friday night. B Hummer's gold, gold buckle. It just works for Carolina. They're I've, on the board. I've got to go back to what I said a minute ago, and I misspoke. I used the wrong word. I said, if Cooper Davis can get it started. What I meant to say was when Cooper Davis gets it started. He is so consistently good this season, and yet another one that he kicks to the eight seconds. It is worth noting his teammate Mason Taylor did ride that one in Anaheim. So they've had B Hummer's gold before to kick it off. Brady Fielder nodding now. Mikey surprised the bull. Keep riding, Fielder! Keep riding! Hustle! Keep riding! Keep riding! Texas answers. Oh! Fielder hung up just for a moment. That's all it took to get in that vulnerable position on his back. Takes a back foot from Mikey surprise. He did get the ride, but it came at a cost. And that is it. Every reward at this level comes with a price. And you can see our sports medicine team in there quickly, his teammates in there quickly. It is such a game of inches when you talk about it. Yeah, he's going to get a great score, going to get a big applause here inside the arena. But at what cost? You see Dr. Tandy Freeman there as well. And right now, this close to Las Vegas, it is not a time to be dealing with injuries. 87 and a quarter, that score did give Texas the lead. Good to see him walking, of course, help back to Sports Med. We'll do the best we can to keep you updated on his condition. And of course, you could always check PBR.com for that as well. If we don't hear by the end of the broadcast, Sage, take us through this. Yeah, well, you can see right here, Bull starts moving away from about the five seconds. That's the one bad thing about a Brazilian rope. Whenever you come off that way, since the way you take your wrap, the rope holds onto you when you get off into your hand like that. And you can see just jerks him right under him and takes a huge shot. Ouch. Pretty Randolph aboard at Zorro. That nod. Run! Keep running! What a ride for Randolph. Zorro now taking a victory lap. Yeah. Randolph on his feet. Zorro not done. He S came to show the crowd some moves. S-L-O-B-B-E-R-K-N-O-C-K-E-R. -E -E Slobber knocker coming your way with this game, Carolina and Texas. Someone's got Google. Spelling bee champ. 1993, take a look at Brady Randolph again, taking one away from his hand. Zorro, no problem, trying to figure things out towards the end. 83 and three quarter points, good thing this wasn't happening during the eight seconds. But you know, Zorro thought, I'm gonna let him go for a victory lap and let him hear the applause from this crowd. Sandra Batista in the middle of the lineup, cold shot the bull, first time the two have matched up. Yeah. Yeah. You better be ready for Batista. Finds the whistle. Get on your feet. Carolina 
it back on the board. They and needed that. Batista getting slammed at the end of that eight-second opportunity. This is a guy, keep in mind, he started his season in Arizona, picked up as a free agent. Richard Childress, Austin Dillon, the crew, they said, hey, we've seen some things that we think this guy can help us out. And look right here. It, the proof is in productivity. Sandro knocking one down. He found the whistle a week ago in Fort Worth for Carolina. He does it again here, this time for 86 aboard Cold Shot. Yeah, really nice ride for him right there both ways. Does get slammed at the end of it. Ooh. If you compare what this, the back of these shoots feel like compared to a month ago, it's different. Keep riding! Keep riding! Keep riding! Keep riding! Keep riding! And DeBrito is dialed in for Texas. Four up, four qualified rides for the number five team. They're hot right here in Arizona. There is absolutely no doubt winning is a universal language and that is one thing that the texas rattlers are understanding in a big big way continuing to stack another score after another score after another this is a big one for IPS. yeah that ride put carolina in a must ride situation and 88 and a half best score we've seen so far in the game sage yeah this is a big time bull ride from Raphael. High Plains Drifter, not a bull very many guys get by. But he said, it's a bull. It might not do what it's supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh! Taylor takes a shot on the way out. Getting up on the shark cage to safety as Orca makes his way around this arena. It started great, and then it quickly went the wrong way, and lots of question marks now, Sage. There are a lot of question marks. Orca right here, that hop and skip before he gets to the spin. Gets Mason shook loose a little bit. Pulls him down inside. Wears him as a hood ornament for a little while. Man. This, is, this is not a question mark you want to have right now if you're Carolina because they need Mason Taylor come Las Vegas. They need, you said it a minute ago, all hands on deck. They definitely need all of their key players and that guy is still one of them. Yes, this is a Ridge Rider crowd, but you can hear the cheers because Cody Jesus is an Arizona guy. Here we go, Dragos the board. Finish! Keep riding! Keep riding! Keep riding! They did it! Texas did it! Cody Jesus did it! Texas is the first team to ride all five Bulls in a game. It took us to week number 10. But the Rowlers just made PBR team's history. I know Cody Jesus is a Texas Rattler, but he calls home Window Rock, Arizona. This place just got electrified, and so did the entire league. Because if you'd have said back a month ago that Texas is going to be the one to finally be perfect five for five, a lot of people would have said you're crazy, but not Cody Lambert and not Texas. Perfect on the day. It was Vieira, Fielder, Randolph, DeBrito, Jesus. The power five that just made history. And they do it right before you're going to the PBR Teams Championship. What a time to be red hot for this Cody Lambert squad. So this is a must ride situation for Swearingen. Sending a message, swearing Jen. Here's the reason he's your reigning world champ. And putting in another mark on the board for Carolina. What a game. Just about any day, three solid qualified rides would win you a game, but not when you're going against a five-ride Texas team. Yeah, a history-making Texas team. But speaking of history, Daylon Swearing is going to go down in, in the archives of PBR history as a world champion. His career far from over. He got a gold buckle in May as an individual. He's still got his sights set on a team title in a couple of weeks. What about this for a score? 431 to 256. Texas making history. The first team to get five qualified rides in a game. And it all finished off with the Arizona Cowboy Cody Jesus. Allen is standing by with Cody. Well, Cody, first of all, making an eight here in Glendale, in Arizona, and getting that reception from these fans. How do you feel? 
Oh, I feel good. I feel like I'm just at home, and my team started off good, four for four, and I just had to back it up and ride another bull. Your Texas Rattlers team just became the first in PBR team's competition to cover all five bulls in a game. This team is rolling so well. What's turned things around from when it wasn't rolling so well earlier in the season? Shoot, I don't know. We just, we're riding bulls now, and we got to keep it up and try to go five for five tomorrow. You having fun? Yes, sir. A lot of fun. There you go. And thanks, folks. Had fun watching you tonight. Cody Jesus and the Texas Rattlers. Perfect in Glendale on a Friday. You know, it, it is a long game. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Good move. Dos Santos sees the sale aboard Black Friday, and he is all in. Kansas City, they get on the board first. Had to know this was going to be a no-brainer for Hanfiel Enrique Dos Santos. Black Friday, I don't care what day of the week it is. It's a weekend because the 27-year-old Brazilian partied on the back of this one. 81 and a half. Did you see it being that low, Sage? I did. Black Friday yeah. just having a nice day. Just kicking and spinning to the right. Rafael does his part, though, gets him on the board. Black Friday, he's not getting paid extra. That's his discount performance. Well, it means that you've been celebrating. Yeah. And Pacheco is perfection aboard money. What a ride for Pacheco. Nashville is on the board. I know we're going to talk about the ride, but what I like is the dismount and the swagger that Kaiki Pacheco has at the end of this big monumental moment. And I've got one thing to say. What's that? Trezintas. 300. I that is number 300 for Pacheco, and that is not exactly how you're supposed to say it in Portuguese. But what a moment. I tried my best. 2018 world champ just made career ride 300. And what a time to do it because his father is here from Brazil and gets to celebrate that monumental milestone with him. How cool is that? And we've been fortunate enough over the years to watch so many historic moments and Pacheco. All in a day's work though. I mean, he barely acts like it's a big deal. That guy sitting next to him, he knows how big this moment is. Send it down to Flint, standing by with Mr. 300. Kaiki, one of the class acts of the, of, of the PBR, 300 rides, what does that mean to you? I'm really happy to read that number. That's really hard to hit that number on that kind of bulls, but that's why we are here. And one for the team, right? Yes, sir, one for the team. What, like I said, one of the class acts of the PBR all these years. Congratulations, buddy. Fifth fastest in PBR history to reach the mark. Marcus Mass here. And here we go again. Mass is magic. Aboard Yellow Feather. Kansas City, two up, two qualified rides. When you're hot, you're hot. And Marcus Mass has been hot as of late. Continue to help lead this team in the charge of the youth movement behind him. But he has stepped up and been the role player J.W. Hart needed him to be and adds another big score to the board. Yeah, 86 and a half for Mass. And of course, giving them the lead because it does move them a full bull ahead. But Nashville has the chance to answer here. And this is the same way we saw the last game started. And same Joao Enrique Lucas got off the practice pulls this week and looked really good. Well, practice makes perfect, and Lucas proven that exactly. Nashville, though, back on the board, matching Kansas City. We've got a close one right here. What you're working on during the week shows up in production on the weekends, and that has been the name of the game for the workhorse. Joe Henry, as they call him affectionately, all the work this week just paid off for the Nashville Stampede. Yeah, they take the lead, 85 and a quarter. They're ahead by four. Yeah, and about as solid as you're ever gonna find a bull ride. High times, just having a nice day. And Lucas, textbook bull ride. Alves down early, 499. That clock is going to stop. 
Oh, but again, the action, it's never done just because the clock stops as Renegade makes his way down and takes a shot at Lucas Teodoro. Yeah, Lucas taking a couple of bumps along the road there, but you talk about those four goal buckles and, and I would never, I, I hate to correct you, but I know Silvano's got three. Yeah, yeah, Taiki's I know. has got one, Justin's got going. two. There's six gold buckles in the Stampede locker room. And I was just gonna say that, and then I thought, well, maybe McBride wants to suit up again, you know? Ryan Dirt Eater did it. Look, I, I promise you, Lucas Teodoro would love to step in front of that one again and, and just make sure that bull knows that Lucas is in control. How incredibly tough and talented are these guys? That game is in the books. It's Nashville who breaks their six-game losing streak, picks up the win, and in doing so, serves up a loss to the Kansas City Outlaws who were red hot just a week ago. You're seeing something here. It's taking some big rides to put a win in the books. Go get him, Dalton Castle. Big Cowboy. Get around there. Get around there. Get around there. Get around there. Good boy. Castle comes in smooth aboard Apple Butter. Wait for it. On his feet on this one. Austin is on the board. Michael Gaffney asking ye shall receive. If you want Dalton Castle to go out there and do cowboy stuff, then cowboy stuff he will do. That is not what he said. 87 and a half. Yeah, nice bull ride from Dalton Castle right here. Apple butter, just a cool little bull. You can't ask for a better one. Round the left into his hand, fading out through the arena. That's a happy Austin Gambler's team. You are on one happy sideline, Flint. Well, mostly they're happy that he landed on his feet. Kate. Right. <laughs> like you mean it. Adriano means it. Here we go. He does have him, Coach. Salgado answers the call in that leadoff spot once again. This time. Finds the whistle board Budokan and puts Missouri on the board. Salgado has continued to step up in that number one position. The Thunder love having him get it rolling, and that is what he's going to do here yet again. Pretty sure he heard the uh, seven-time champ say Forte up here, so good job, Sage. Appreciate that. There was a lot of strength right there from Adriano, putting him on the board. 82 and three quarters, so it won't be enough to take the lead, but it was a much needed ride as we've now seen it taking a few rides to get a win here. Keep that elbow down. Right there, Joey. That boy. Right there, Joey. Right there, Joey. Right there, Joey. Yeah, yeah. Right all day. All day. Southpaw goes to the right into Davino's hand and he makes the whistle. Austin is on a roll. And he makes it count when his team needed it the most. The Gamblers needing to stay consistent and needing to keep the gas pedal hammered on this one. Lucas, getting it done. Lucas ain't having a time of it on Southpaw. Great bull in the gate to the right, but not a clinic. And, and you know, hey guys, there you see him walking away from Lucas Teodoro. I love their celebration. They throw a poker chip into the crowd. He walked over to Lucas Teodoro and handed it directly to him and said, thanks, my friend. Either way, either way, don't let, don't let, don't let. Puts another one on the board for Missouri. You think Ross Coleman didn't know the playbook of that bull? You heard him coming in there right as that bull got ready to spin, saying, go left, go left, go left. Yeah, book on the bull either way. Doesn't matter for Luke Parkinson. Kicks out, goes left, backs up a little bit, and this is pretty. 84 for Parkinson. Not enough to take the lead here in the game in this one, but it was a much needed ride to stay neck and neck with the Gamblers. Alvaro Alvarez Aguilar next to nod for Missouri Thunder. He is on the clock. Dagger is the bull. Throw him at him and he rides him all day long into his hand for eight. Pull the rope on his feet. Missouri has got another one. And the Thunder is rolling. The Cowboys of Thunder continue. Oh, ho, ho. 
throw a little something new in the mix for Triple A in the celebration, but you hear Ross Coleman yelling at his guys, stay square, stay square, stay square. That's something that they are doing very, very well as of late. Yeah, they are. They're, they're finding the whistles and munches. No different here for Triple A. And a big reason to dance for Aguilar as well. That is his first qualified ride on PBR team, so big moment. Big moment indeed, but look at this. Now you're seeing a little extra fun happen here for the Missouri Thunder, much to the delight of the people right there behind him, even more to the delight of his Thunder teammates. Looks good. Down early and don't like to see him get hung up here. Remember. Earlier this season, Pereira was on the IR because he was recovering from reconstructive elbow surgery. So don't like to see that, but doesn't seem to be in pain, which is a great sign. 3 and 41, that buck off time, and uh, well, this game is not in the books yet. Kind of a weird start here in the beginning for this, this matchup. I am really surprised that we didn't see a challenge hit for this rad rod here. They, they had their hand over the button, and they saw the beginning of that replay, and they said, yeah, uh, no. Alan, I think you should have hit it for them. I think you should have just <laughs> nudged their hand a little bit. Just, I mean, because at the end of the day, again, every team gets one. And if you don't use it. Well, if they want it, Alan, you'd be called a hero. If they didn't, Coach Ross might say some other F words that are not forte to you. So yeah. um, probably a good thing not to touch it, right? Failure. Uh, it Failure. Is, it's red for a reason. Hands off. Failure is what I was going with. I know. That's why Enjoy I said it. it. Yeah. Enjoy it, little brother. Enjoy it. And I don't know that this, it. Jose, go. is go human. And he does it again. No surprises here. A big move from bad decisions early in the ride, but nothing. When you're Jose Vitor Limi on the back of a bull, Austin back on the board. And this right here is the difference in Jose Vitor Limi in 2019 and 2022. This bull would have given him problems three years ago. Now he is the complete package. Big jumps, round of the right, and what does Jose do? Picks him up perfect. And rides him even more perfect. This is great. Somebody on the back of the bucket shoots just said that's too easy, and I agree with him. I think this could have been an even higher score, but Jose makes it look so easy. Austin takes game three, 263 and a quarter to 254 and a half. He's a tough bull, and at the end of the day, Put your best guy on him. Number one draft pick for a reason. Let's see it. Oh, Vassbinder gets forward quickly, though. And slow to get up as well. Good to see their number one guy on his feet. Going to be frustrated with that out. And Show Off did a lot of just that buck off time, 1 and 95. You know who else was showing off in the middle of all this? Those U.S. Border Patrol safety Men. Take a look at Lucas Teodoro, Cody Webster, and Nathan Harp. They're going to move in there right when Eli Vassbinder needed them the most. Yeah, Kate mentioned it. Leans forward right out of the gate. Bull clicks his heels, gets his feet light. It's a tough spot to be in. 44 and a half bull score. Huge numbers. That's the caliber of bull we often see in championship rounds. <laughs> Punches his ticket to eight. Gets Oklahoma on the board. Trying to pull out some extra points there, too, with those moves. The freedom are finding a way. Every hot streak starts with one, and that was the one Tate pohlmeyer has been looking for all season long. But it is, we're being told now, under official review, so they will go back and take a look at this from the time that gate cracked open till the time it hit eight. Going to be really close right here. You can't try any harder than Tate Pohlmeyer did, though, and that's what I love to see from this young kid. Well, and that's something the front office at Oklahoma saw because Tate started his season with another team. 
Oklahoma saw the opportunity to grab him up as a free agent, and they did not hesitate. They've seen a tremendous upside with Tate. Question is, will they see the eight seconds with the review here? Sage, you are our resident expert. Would you give him the qualified ride? Well, I think this angle is going to show us a lot better. But the big thing is, is they're going to have to have conclusive evidence to overturn it. Well, and to overturn that eight seconds. And I think right there, I think that's the telltale right at that eight second mark. Does he still have hold of that rope, have contact with that rope before he touches the ground or disqualifies himself by touching the bull? That's out of the equation. So it's all about where does that left hand touch the dirt? And it is inconclusive. So Pohlmeyer will get the qualified ride and puts Oklahoma on the board. First to strike is huge when it's only five outs apiece in these games. Just comfortable with where he is. Let the hats fly, Arizona. You're on the board. Heck yeah. Big time bull ride from Alessandra Souza. You mentioned it before the ride. This is what we came to expect at the start of this season from this guy. Big rides, big moments. Wow. Might not have been in the number one position, but he is the guy that gets the ball rolling for the Ridge Riders here today. They're going to feed off of that momentum, the, the energy on the back of the bucket shoots. Look at his teammate. Look at his coaches. They are fired up. And now we've got a game on our hands. He's been a mark of consistency for this team. And right at average 85. Well, here he bettered that 86 to put Arizona ahead. And we have got a close one now. Team sliding up on that bull rope. Oh! Kobaba comes down, and you can hear the impact with the dirt. Good to see him on his feet. 3 and 24, that buck off time in Arizona. Will they take the win at home? Yeah, it's going to be huge for the Ridge Riders. But what a day for this bull. Yeah, huge out from this bull, 46 and a quarter points. And you can see this bull is making full revolutions with every jump. Shoulders are moving totally sideways. That was a big time out. That is one happy Arizona Ridge Riders squad right here on their home dirt. Well, it was just a couple rides in this game, and it was a bigger score from Arizona, and that was enough to get the win. 86 to 84 and a half. Allison DeSouza with that one ride that gave him the win, and Allen is standing by with coaches Paul Krimber and Colby Yates. Well, the Arizona Ridge Riders kick off their home weekend and an important weekend with a win here in Glendale. Colby, I'll start with you. What does winning here in Glendale mean for this this franchise? Well, winning means everything. I mean, we've been, you know, you know, just put in our hands to build a great team here around a great group of fans like y'all have. Thank y'all so much for coming out and supporting us. Um, this was a very tough game. We were a little bit nervous, actually a whole lot nervous the whole time, but we had y'all support and we really do appreciate it. And this is what it's all about, building a great fan base around a great team and we appreciate everything you do. Paolo, when you only get one of five and you still win, what's your message to the team in accomplishing that? Uh, I know we have some work to do. Uh, the Bulls didn't kind of change up by the, the, based on the videos we watched, but we always know that they will come back tomorrow stronger than today. And with your support, this fan base here, it's incredible. we just very proud and very blessed to have Arizona as our home. And congratulations on winning at home. Paolo Krimber and Colby Yates, the Arizona Ridge Riders, win it. When he puts one or two rides together, he'll get that momentum going. It's all Taylor tonight into his hand. He's there for the requisite eight. And with that, Carolina, their first to strike. And with that, Mason Taylor breaks out of a slump, and that is key 
heading into Las Vegas for the Carolina Cowboys to regain that tempo and start climbing back up towards that number one position. Go back to their home state of Carolina. Taylor goes perfect four for four, even a big ride in a bonus round. So when he gets hot, he gets hot. This one for 87 and a quarter. God, what a great bull run for Mason Taylor. To start things off for the Carolina Cowboys, Bull just having a nice day, kicking out, kicking and spinning. Good bull, but an even better ride. Get his confidence back here this weekend, going into T-Mobile Arena. Think about the last time he was there. He had a field day in Vegas. See, stand square now. This one aboard Coach K. Get out of the way. He's on his feet with that Missouri. Answers Carolina. Why are we even in this booth right now? Ross Coleman just called that ride perfectly. He said all day, all day, going to change directions. That's exactly what happened. And now it is time to do a little dance in Glendale. Get it, Triple A. 86 and a half. Not enough to take the lead, but enough to answer and match the Bulls. And this is a textbook ride from Triple A. Round to the left, into his hand. Goes back the other way. Doesn't matter for this guy. He's that good. Colton Fritzland there, their number one pick on the back of the shoots. He has been out with injury. Very much expecting to see him back at World Finals. And that alone should get you at least an extra two to three points in your ride. Look, I was looking behind Personally those. Personally speaking. I was looking behind Triple A and Marcelo at Luke. Snyder and Ross Coleman, and I want to see those coaches do that exact same dance for the next ride. Somebody's got to make that happen. You need this kid. You need to keep an eye on him. They like what they've seen. You ride him like he's going straight, and you ride him all day long. Parkinson to the pay window. He's not, on the four. Not quite yet, though. There is a decision to make here. Ross Coleman, you can hear him asking. We're going to, we got more bulls. We got a, we're a bull ahead of them. I know. Or if we count on riding the rest of them. 77 and a half. 77 and a half for a re-ride, Luke. We got to take it, don't we? Huh? We got to take it, don't we? They're going to ride all the rest of the bulls. Yeah. Guys, you only got like 30 seconds. We'll take it. Take the re-ride. Take the re-ride. Who's your rider? Oh, oh. Luke, hurry guys. He got him again. Him Luke, again. Him same again. rider. What's your rewrite, Cindy? Luke Nasty Pete. wishes. Go. That's what he just wrote. What great insight there. Luke Parkinson, there Nasty Wishes, the rewrite, and very much have to agree with that coaching staff. They know Carolina's got 2016 world champ Cooper Davis. Reigning champ and Dalen Swearingen set to go. They expect not only rides but huge scores. 77, they don't believe is going to cut it. You want to be stacked as a team. You put a couple recent gold buckles in your number four and five spot. Watch out. Oh, Born to Sin with a surprise here to the left and gets Cooper Davis down to the right. Three and 52 that buck off. And now you're wondering should Missouri have kept the ride? Yeah, I mean, it, it is. You have 77 and a half points in the bank. To me, you almost always keep your guaranteed points. But this is super surprising from Cooper Davis right here. But here's the other side of that equation. We talk about it in hindsight, but when you look at the matchups, Cooper Davis has ridden this bull three consecutive times, twice for 90 plus. You cannot think that he's going to see what we just saw. And this is when those identities of the teams have really taken shape. Machado is money. Lands on his feet. Get to the celebration. Good guy. It can celebrate with one hand. Missouri, they're back on the board. He wanted to celebrate, but the hand hurts and it got in the way. Are you kidding me? A hurt hand will always ruin a great celebration. But Missouri should be celebrating right now. You only need one hand for a good fist pump. 86 and three quarters. Now, Missouri back in the lead again. This is what this is all about. Look, see? One hand, fist pump. Ross Coleman. I'm celebrating, but his hand's still sore. 
Hang on, hang on. This is really unprofessional. Luke! Luke! I want to see you and Ross do the dance. Next qualified ride, you guys have to do the dance, okay? Cool. Wow! What a leap out from Bullet Train and sends Dalen flying just like one. 4 and 18, that buck off time. And this is where scouting just doesn't matter when you're talking about bull riding because this bull, Cooper's bull, both of them did different things than their normal trips and got both of the world champions on the ground. Oh, and takes a hit too. 45 and a quarter points for that bull, bullet train. We're already seeing these bulls that are capable of bringing the 90s and written this bull before too. 90 and three quarter points, let's go. And that is how it's done. Andrew Alvidra's back to the whistle again. Make that two qualified rides aboard the Punisher for Alvidrez. Did the Missouri Thunder just wake up a sleeping giant? Because all of a sudden, they look like a team that could contend for a title, and Andrew Alvidrez is a huge part of it. 89 and a quarter. Last time the two danced to eight, it was 90 and three quarters. So some big numbers for the Punisher for Andrew. Yeah, worth every point to the Punisher. A bull nobody really likes getting on. What does Andrew Alvidro say? Give him to me, let me shine. Wow, and for Alvidro, that marks his 10th qualified ride at three game winners this season. That, of course, the game was already in the books, but. All right, Luke, so how do you feel about your team's performance in uh, a pretty strong game right there against Carolina? Yeah, you know, we narrowly missed one last night. Uh, I'm so proud of these guys coming into the home stretch of Vegas. They're all clicking at the right time. You know, we got our number one and number two guys down for majority of the year. And all our roster is so strong that we can really rely on any of these guys. And I'm loving the way this team's forming right in the right time. You know what my second question is, right? Because Matt was picking on you before. Were you going to do Triple A's uh, victory dance? Look, uh, look at West up there on top of it. He wants to know, are you going to do the dance? Hey, I don't know. I don't want to get hat whipped by Ross too bad if he does that. So I think I'll lay off the dance and leave it to Alvaro. <laughs> well, well done. Thank you. Congratulations, Luke Snyder and the Missouri Thunder. Get a win. I think we're about to see a whole nother level to these guys. Lay down, backflip, doesn't matter what the bull's gonna do. Eli's gonna hang on, ride through it, get to the eight seconds. Now, it's decision time. Yeah, Sage, you said all the tricks, so Eli thought, you know, we'll just show them all to you right here in eight. Listen to this. We're gonna, if we're winning first, we're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep it. Keep it. gonna keep it. <laughs> there you go, it is a 73 and a half, and what they were talking through, you saw the red flag, so there was a uh, re-ride opportunity, and Coach McCoy doing what he has most of the season, of deciding to go for let's get as many rides as possible, and let's beat them with the number of qualified rides. Yeah, I like this move from Coach Coach McCoy. You can see an inspired, fired up Freedom team just put it in their hands. Well, you keep in mind that half of the score comes from the rider, half comes from the performance of the bull. I can I can assure you, Eli's score was much higher than the bull on this one. Bull just not having a great day, went all the way to the dirt. Uh, but Eli doing his doing his job. And not to worry, Eli, because Flint Rasmussen is going to protect you from anything happening in the arena. You can tell he felt real confident in Flint's abilities there for that. I don't know that Flint can protect him from anything happening on top of the shark cage, <laughs> much less anything happening in the dirt. So he's got to move quickly. And he gets 301 right after 300. The patience pays off. First down, waited a jump to make that move, and Kaiki was there for it all. Yeah, he did wait a jump. This is a really good bull ride from Kaiki. You hear me talk about it all the time. Toughest move to make. 
when as the bull takes a big jump away from you and then goes away from your hand. You can see it right here on the Las Vegas jib cam. First down, no match for the world champion. We talk about some of these rides. You said a really good bull. I mean, that's more of a bull rider's bull ride. Not going to be the highest score, but you see the difficulty in what he just did. But the score is big enough to take the lead 83 and a half here. So uh, two up, two qualified rides, and we've got a ball game. Tank Pacheco has been on this one. Keep the hot streak rolling. That's two in a row for Tate Polmeyer. You said it. He's a superstar on the rise. And with every eight seconds, his stock continues to climb higher and higher. 86 and a quarter. I said it last night. This guy has superstar potential. He has got everything that it takes. All he's got to do is get out of his own way to win. And you're seeing it now. Derek gets forward here. Does come down in four and 67. And with that, Oklahoma still has the lead, but very much leaving the door open for Nashville because they've got two outs remaining. If they find a qualified ride, they just need 76 and a half to take the lead and what will be the win in this one. Well, and this is gonna be a heartbreaker. We, we know everything that we've talked about in the scenarios and situations, but when you keep it back in terms of just this sport, Derek Kolbaba is a guy that they expect to ride all of them. As crazy as that sounds, and that bull in particular is one that I would bet on Derek to ride 10 out of 10 times. Nashville takes down Oklahoma. We got a race. Stay up. 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 Don't move. Take it off. Okay. So clearly it will be a re-ride. 4B special decided just to take a stroll and a stand out there today. That's so. exactly how I felt uh, until about 5 o'clock today. Just like that bull did. With those re-ride flags. There is now conversation very similar to what we had on the freedom sideline. Sage, if you're the coach, do you take the re-ride? You definitely take the re-ride <laughs> in this position because okay. he's not going to be enough points to take the lead. May I help you with some information? So Bono will points. take the re-ride and Mr. Winston will be the re-ride bull. So Nashville's still with a couple more to come. Let's go. Ponson Rodolfo, Justin. <laughs> Three-time champ was Clawson. He's here. He is here. He has arrived and won a ride aboard safety meeting. Well done, Nashville Stampede. Not only in the victory, but in getting Clawson Rodolfo on your roster. He just showed everybody why they picked him up. Coming in clutch. 89, more than enough to take the lead in this one. Wow, what a debut and coming out party of sorts for Adolfo. Yeah, welcome to the show, Klotz. And that was a big time bull ride on a great bull from Chad Berger. And you can see right here, bull pushes back a little bit. Klotz and gets his hip set and just goes to work. I don't think it's a coming out party just for Klotz and Rodolfo. I think this is a new coming out party for a new Nashville Stampede squad that Justin McBride's been telling us about all season long. And we talk about peaking at the right time. It's the last event of the regular season moving into the finals and the playoffs. This is the perfect time to be performing at this level. And the perfect time to talk to McBride, Alan. All right, let's step over here to the rail because he just climbed up to get a look at this last ride. Justin, one to go, but what a performance by your team. You have to be happy. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, Clatston there just did a great job. This is the first event he's got to come to, and he just gave it everything he had on a re-ride. Really proud of that guy's effort. 
could win your first event on the last weekend of the season. It's Saturday, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're trying to finish this game. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. To Justin McBride's mouth right now as he's telling Savannah, let's go. Taking a couple shots on his way out, but makes the end of board. Mr. Winston to put yet another one on the board. Nashville cruising before Las Vegas. We're seeing a celebration here. Silvano Alves and Flynn Rasmus, and Alves going to be very happy, and McBride going to be very happy about his performance. But the performance I'm looking at was the U.S. Border Patrol bullfighters. You saw. Cody Webster in the heat of the battle there, taking a couple of shots, but he's right back in the mix over there again. And speaking of being right back in the mix, so on the Nashville Stampede. Wow, 88 and a half. And I hate to say it, but good call by Justin McBride. 88 and a half is a little bit better than the 32, but look at Cody Webster. Did not waver right in the line of fire. Ouch. How special are these guys? It's absolutely amazing. Every time I watch these U.S. Border Patrol guys, the only way that we can have four riding is with great lapsavers like them. As for Nashville Stampede, this is the first time all season they've won back-to-back -back games. Yeah, that's huge for the Stampede. And again, peaking at the right time for Nashville. Last week, and now they're bringing it all in here. Lucas Camino, milk mustache. They strike early in this one. Get ready to stack those chips up and push them all in if you're an Austin Gamblers fan. Coach Michael Gaffney ecstatic with the performance of Lucas Davino. This is an impressive bull ride from Lucas. Milk Mustache bucks with his head up the whole time. Makes him very strong. He hits the ground like a ton of bricks. Lucas did a nice job sticking with him. And 87 for Davino, and I'm calling it his best yet. He's been able to find back-to-back -back rides this season. You have to go all the way back to about Nashville beginning of the season to find any two rides together. And now it, we had it a day ago, and yet we've got it here again. So he's doubling down. They've got so much talent. Take that and watch it time and time again. Picture perfect, even with the direction change for Dos Santos. Kansas City, they're on the board. JW Hart put a smile on your face. Your little 27-year-old Brazilian stepped up to the plate and got the job done. He can go both directions, doesn't matter, right, left, into his hand, away from his hand, eight seconds. That's the name of the game, and here we go. Coach Hart told me at the beginning of the season, I very much felt my first three guys are all first rounders. Well, he doesn't have his first rounder in Dalton Castle anymore. He's over and now a gambler. So for Dos Santos, his round three pick to step up in a big way out of the gate. Huge for this Kansas City squad. If 10 wasn't working, let's triple it. Make room for Marcus Mills. He leads this team in the form of eight seconds, and the veteran has done it again. Kansas City puts another one on the board. 30 seconds, I, that's what it felt like. That felt like a really long eight seconds. J.W. Hart, he's feeling the excitement clapping for his breakout superstar. Look at the intensity on the back of the bucket shoots. We talk about PBR teams, how special it is. Look at this group. That's what's winning for them. They're doing everything as a team. 86 points aboard Bubba G. For Marcus, second time he's made the whistle and made an 86 point ride on that bull. It very much feels go like Eddie, everyone's go. right there waiting for that nod. Here it is. Go, Eddie. In your hand. Get up. 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 Get up.
but he is now, head, coach. On your feet, on your head, whatever works. And Kansas City head. is on the board again. I'm loving this team. On I love your, all the teams. On your feet, on your head, whatever works. Just get to the eight seconds. That's what he does. And much to the delight of JWR. That was such excellent play-by-play -play on the back of the steel there. I love it. Give us something, Sage. It was good. This was a good ride from Rudman. Full kicks out, round into his hand. Rides him perfect. The get off could use a little work, as we heard. But it's big, putting numbers on the board for the Outlaws. The gambler gets it! Time in a bottle was throwing everything in the kitchen sink and more in Castle continues to create that chaos as a gambler. Sage, I don't know if I can speak for both of us, but I've seen Dalton Castle do some incredible things. I've seen every great bull rider in my generation. That impressed me so much, what Dalton Castle just did. It very well should have. This was a man's bull ride. 91 and a quarter. And could have been more. Time in a bottle is bucking so hard. There's a lot going on. So many distractions. He is inches away from the steel. Doesn't phase Dalton Castle. And that is a hard to get 91 and a quarter. That's not timing or just looking good. That is a dog fight for Dalton. And you saw a very pleased general manager, JJ Gotch, happy there. And he knows he needs a ride when you've got Lenny and Mitch on the wings. Go on, go on, go on. Yeah. Pulling the rope as Speckle T goes go, down, go. and then of course continues to buck. But uh, scary moments there that because of the quick work by that U.S. Border Patrol protection team ended up being the best outcome it could. Man, we're hearing in the arena, Clint Atkins telling everybody that Colton Hevelo will be the guys to take the re-ride. It'll be Southpaw, the 19-year-old, who's going to do it again. So Colton Hevelo going to have a quick turnaround and, and just kind of have to reset, catch his breath, get his gear ready, and go again. Go to him! Come on, Come on qualified ride that seals the deal. You're looking at him. The two-time champ, Jose Vitor Lemmy, just won the first ever PBR Team Series MVP race. Makes me wonder how many of these incredible moments we are going to be able to experience with Jose Vitor Lemmy. The, the world title, the second world title, the highest score ever in the history of the PBR, and now the first PBR team's MVP, his resume just continues to be more and more impressive. And that ride that officially earned him that $50,000 bonus is 85 aboard Chainsaw. What do you make of just everything you're seeing, Sage? No one would know it better than you from gold buckle to gold buckle. This is history that everybody's watching. And I think they just need to sit back and enjoy because you are watching a true generational talent in Jose Lima. Here I'm J.W. Hart and the Outlaws. It'll be much more than that. Be ready! Be ready! Get him in! Sit up! Sit up! Sit up! Oh! Gets forward and hung up. The try, the effort, it was all there. But Hevelo had to make the eight. Comes down at five and 52. Heartbreaking loss here for the Outlaws. It is heartbreaking. This right here is the youth that shows through in this huge pressure moment. You can see him almost just clamp down a little bit whenever he gets in a little bit of trouble. Southpaw gets him down.
I'm looking. I'm looking at the GM JJ Gotch, and he's got yep. maybe the biggest smile in town right now. First of all, let's start with you, Dalton. You came to this team. They had expectations of you. How does it feel to be part of this group accomplishing what they're accomplishing down the stretch here? It's a huge blessing, and I'm very thankful for this team, this organization. They've been just extremely good to us, and I can't thank them enough. And having guys that push me just makes us all stand up and uh, just rise to the occasion. And another big score and big ride for you. Jose, I'll ask what I know is most important to you first. Your team won tonight. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel great. Uh, no words to describe that. Another win, another good game, so I'm so happy for another game win. With making the whistle tonight, you have locked up the MVP award for PBR teams for this year as the top rider in the inaugural season. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So happy another, you know, another big, uh, big win for me, for my career. That, that's going to be amazing. I'm just so happy to help my team uh, in each ride, and that is a consequence, you know, of a lot of hard work, and I'm just so thank God for all this on my career. Congratulations, Jose Mirolemi, Dalton Castle, the Austin Gamblers win tonight, and uh, are fighting for first place on the final day on Sunday. Joe Howard Carter Vieira aboard Red River, and he has ridden, guys, four in a row. Let's make it five. Keep run! Keep run! Keep run! All day long for the veteran. Vieira finds a whistle. He's on his feet. That is what he's done for years. Super solid, spectacular. Whatever you want to say, JRB lives up to all of those and more. And that's why he's the leadoff guy. Knocks it out of the park again. You think his teammate liked it? And Jay Caminas there for every jump. 88 and three quarters. They just heard this crowd cheering for Arizona. And then you put out Vieira first. That'll quiet a crowd pretty fast. Yeah, what's not to love, JRB? Putting up some numbers on the board. And we talked about the sixth man. He just silenced them with that ride. They gotta love what they're seeing on this matchup with one boot gamble. Take the lead. 89 and a quarter. Picture perfect performance for De Castro. You could not have drawn it up any better. Let's watch it again. Yeah, this is an absolute perfect bull ride from De Castro. Right on the left, and he is just showing off for his home fans right there. Coach Colby Yates just showing a, a touch of emotion. But he'll go either way. The burrito strong either, either direction. Get up! Keep running! Keep running! Keep running! Woo! Keep running! Texas yes, is on a tear. No other way to put it for DeBrito. Another qualified ride for Texas. They're perfect in the desert, guys. Put the Rattlers on the board. Rafael was 0 for his last four until last night when he finally broke out of that little bump in the road and we talked about it confidence is so important in this sport Debrito, he's got that confidence and he just took it all the way to eight seconds yeah and 88 points at that big scores and that's something that i think we're going to see on both sides of the the arena here we're going to see big score after big score after big score i talked to the coaching staff of arizona and they said they really feel like they have to ride all five of their bulls to even have a chance to win this game. Just hold on to the back of Dr. Campbell's. He made this move and wait for it. Nose. Pull nose. If you're redoing a house, pull nose edges. That is a thing. Say something. How about a tip, a, how about a tip of the cap to Andy Hoke, our cameraman right yes. there. Never flinched. Wait, by our entire, our entire no, not crew. moving. Here we go. Camina, Dr. Campbell. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Let 
the celebration ensue for the 2002 world champ. Yet another qualified ride. Let him hear you, Arizona. It's incredible. It's almost like Edgeney found a time machine and went back, found the fountain of youth. Fast forward 20 years later, and let's relive all those highlights from two decades ago. This is just so cool to watch. Dr. Campbell not having the best day, but Edgeney staying focused in the corner. The steal's close, doesn't matter. 81 and a half points for Edgeney, and now the Texas Rattlers, they're three for three in this game. You know what's so neat about our tractor supply desk up here? While you were talking, I saw the rewrite flag. Allen's on the back of the shoots for the Ridge Riders. So I just been down here and had a word myself with Coach Cody Lambert. And he said, yep, we are keeping it. on the back of the shoots for the Ridge Riders. On, Very satisfied with that one. We'll see what they decide to do. It's going to be a tough decision. It's going to get them a little bit closer, but there's still going to be a full bull and then some behind uh, Texas Rattlers, 79 and a quarter points. I don't know. Two. Could be a game-defining decision right there to keep that score. That might be a season-defining moment right there because right. if this shifts in favor of Arizona, they're the heroes. If it doesn't, there's a lot of questions to be answered. Coach Grimper, why did you decide to keep the score? It's hard because all the Bulls, the three good re-rides already been taken, and there was probably nothing very good back there. We're just going to try that, keep that score, and see where it plays out. Thanks. So they don't know the exact bull, but they do know what is left of the re-ride pin, and not liking a, perhaps the bovine athletes that are coming up next. This is why you wear your party shirt. Firecracker the bull. Got to make it count, though, Keyshawn. He gets it. Keyshawn gets the ride. Is it enough to take the lead? It's got to be 90. It could be close. There's some drama. There's some drama happening right now. We're watching Keyshawn celebrate. But the other sideline is saying, hey, we want a challenge. We think we just saw a touch. And the roar of the crowd, you could not hear it in the background, but we're at a vantage point where we can see both. Cody Lambert immediately signify for his team to hit that challenge button. And Cody just signaling to us they're looking for a slap. Yeah, and they're going to look for that free hand, Sage. Sage, you saw it just as fast as Lambert did, I believe. It was right about that seven-second mark. Keyshawn really had to kind of make a big move to get over there. And came. it'll it'll be actually on the back side of this bull. You couldn't tell it in real time if it was a slap or not, but he definitely came really close. Wow. You just saw a replay take a score off the board for Texas. Could it do the same for the home team in Arizona? I think so. It's really close. That's going to be the telltale. Pun intended. No score. Wow, you heard it. They're taking it off the board. They're calling a slap, and they're taking the score off. And Get ready to listen to this crowd. Yeah, I'm going to my car right now. I'm getting out of here because they're not going to be happy about this one. Cody Lambert taking his hat off. Wow. Every great sport has to have a bad guy, and there's nobody better at that role. He is not, though, a bad guy. If you're Brady Randolph that just got his score taken off the board, that just got... I, I wouldn't call it a smile, but got this guy back in the game.
waiting for that nod, waiting for the eight. What? And bath time! What? Does it move? He doesn't move! The biggest yeah, moment you. of the entire game in bath time said, I'm going to the back! I said, you know, Get Eduardo. another bull! Eduardo! All right. Did you write that, Hollywood? I don't think so. So at what point of the night does a crowd like this boo a bull? V Hammer's goal. Hey. That was a lot of pressure for back time, okay? He's got Grant waiting in the trailer. Well, let me tell you about back time. Back time will not have any time back at this tour. That's the last time we've seen that bull. Hey, he's a good bull. While we were talking, you hear the talk on the Ridge Riders. Wait, I hate to interrupt you, but I got to go back and watch no, you this. Don't. Let's look again. Yeah, you're right. Let, let's look again. Look, this real time. Sage, break down that out. 1001, 1002. <laughs> back time just not feeling it, all right? I, don't. I still don't think I could ride that bull. Yeah. yeah. You're right. We talk about guys in high pressure situations. We saw back time really crack under the pressure here at Ridge Rider Days. I don't think he's going to be back in the starting lineup. Okay. That is the question. 90 points is a tall ask. I don't see it with this ride. Eduardo did absolutely everything he could, but I'm just not sure. I would not want to be the one to tell the crowd that. 85 and a half, but you hear the boos though, Matt. You've already highlighted something though here in our day sheet. I gotta go back to the third guy out, Alisson de Souza. The Ridge Riders had a chance to take 79 and a quarter off the board, but the compelling thing about PBR teams, in the heat of the moment, they had to make a split second decision. And unfortunately, in this case, it went the wrong way. Well, Cody Lambert, nine straight wins for the Texas Rattlers. Nine straight wins. How do you feel about your team's performance tonight? I felt good. I thought, you know, I was, Brady Randolph was really close there, and I and I prefer to ride more bulls than the other team did. But the way things worked out, uh, we got the win, and and uh, we're glad to do that. Your team came into this weekend without its hottest rider coming in, and yet here you are, two and zero on the weekend. Why have people been able to step up when you've needed them? Well, we try to, <laughs> we got really good riders and they try to do their job. There you go. Congratulations. You play to rock, lock up the regular season title tomorrow. I'm going to try to. We're, we're going to try to. I'm just going to watch. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations. By the way, when he walked up, he said, I must be the most popular guy in this building right now. <laughs> He's in the top three overall qualified rides in this league right now. direction Marcus is there for eight you see the flags flying so there's a rewrite opportunity Kansas City coach JW Hart will have to decide if he wants to take we've seen this be a very critical decision uh, this weekend but you're also hearing the challenge as he looks over to the Oklahoma sideline and Oklahoma uh, first of all the rewrite flag came out second let's hear from Cord McCoy you, you just hit the challenge button on that yeah, we did. Uh, look like he come close there with his free hand there. I think he might have slapped him. All right, so uh, there's a lot for Alan Jordan to look at when he goes back into the review room. There is, so we'll have to unpack this. But one thing that needs no unpacking, when that challenge sound we all heard in here happened, Coach J.W. Hart looked directly across, glaring at Coach Corden McCoy in that Oklahoma sideline. Yeah, there, I mean, there's some gamesmanship here, Corden McCoy, but watch that right hand, the one that's up in the air. That's what we're going to be looking at here. And Oklahoma thinking it gets 
close enough. And there you see the reaction from Marcus Mass. He said, absolutely not. I didn't touch him. And who better than Marcus Mass to ask if he oh. did? Sage, as a bull rider, you've been in these positions. Don't you know if you touch him or not? A lot of the times, <laughs> yes, but sometimes, no. There's so much stuff going on during those eight seconds that you, you can clip one and not know it. But if you're Oklahoma, it's worth a chance. If you're new, you've got one challenge per game, and if you, if you don't utilize it, then you might have missed an opportunity. And we just saw successful yesterday. We mentioned it with Texas, and uh, Coach Lambert Kate swore calling a slap on the Arizona Ridge Rider side, and ultimately they get the victory. Now they're 2 0 here at the Four event, so his challenges are huge. I talk about everything that's at stake here for both teams. Kansas City has a lot riding on this because they've seen some bright spots as of late. They need to keep that momentum going, and I think those guys are going to be happy with the decision from the officials. Yeah, so uh, the challenge happened. Let's take that breakdown first, and they're saying there was no slap, so it is a qualified ride, so Oklahoma will lose their one challenge for the game. If he can get by. Oh, wow. Comes down so early and shot like a cannon out of there. Thanks to Slim Shady's horns, 199, the buck off time. And that was high velocity. Watch this. This is a uh, very humbling moment for anybody. When a bull shoots you across the arena like that. Well, it shows you the power of these bulls. A bull just flung him 20 foot across the arena. Big shot. Interesting here, strategy from JW Hart. Let's put another guy on this bull second time around. Lima loses his feet though just a couple seconds in. Off campus gets an upper hand on this one. 349, that buck off time. Yeah, and again, you see the toughness of the Kansas City Outlaws. Leonardo Lima fitting right into that equation. Did not go his way. But watch this. Just a good thing that he's back up and on his feet. Takes a huge shot there, and we're not done. Another couple of shots on his way down. Great job, as always, by the U.S. Border Patrol. Bullfighters stepping in there, letting Lima get away. And you can see he's not happy with the way that one went. Not as scripted here today. He's already been 90 on this season. Red River can do it again. to the sideline. We're already hearing a challenge, but from what we saw in the field, it's a qualified ride. And now teammate Eli Vassbinder, Cody Webster going over to help Kolbaba out. Goodness, not what you want to see from this team. And just goes to show that the heart, the effort that was put into that eight by Kolbaba. No matter the outcome here, that is the most devastating thing that could have happened to the Oklahoma Freedom lineup today. Derek Kolbaba has been their standout star, especially in the second half of the season. You talk about those three walk-off wins that he had consecutively, and we kind of thought, okay, he's due for another big moment. That is not the ending the Oklahoma Freedom wanted to see. So being told it is under review, they're looking for a slap. You heard the challenge. Either way, Sages, we're seeing back what the officials are. Take us through this, and especially the end. Now, of course, you're seeing and, and hearing cheers because Cole Baba's on his feet. Good to see. Yeah, all I see is a great bull ride right here. I don't see any reason that a challenge was even, even thrown. He is walking away on his feet, and with that, it is confirmed it's a qualified ride. So walk-off win number four for Derek Kolbaba. Oklahoma Freedom still alive in the hunt for that ever-so-critical bye. And let's go back to the end of this ride. Still alive, but at what price? And we know that everything has a cost. Right now, that is not the price they wanted to pay. Yeah, no, a huge shot. You can see right there, Bull stepping on his leg right by his knee. Hopefully everything's okay for DK. And it will be a couple weeks before we get to Las Vegas and perhaps a much needed time off for that Oklahoma squad. Take a look at the virtual championship bracket. As it would stand now, Oklahoma Freedom would be your number one team. They would get that by. 
along with the Austin Gamblers. But the final day of the regular season, not in the books quite yet. Yeah, they're going to sit here on the front row and watch everything that happens here today to see if they'll remain in that top. About to get it all from Cooper Davis right now on show off. Cooper Davis hung up the who and stepped on. Takes a shot on his feet, but surely feeling that one, you saw the contact. But Carolina is on the board. Yeah, and we talk about this Bulls name. The only thing showing off right now is Cooper Davis. I mean, take a look at this. Absolute dominating performance by the world champ. Opening up without outside foot. This, not going to be fun to watch, though. 88 and three-quarter points, and much of that was from Cooper Davis. Half the scores from the Bull, half for the Ryder. Well, show off was 42 and a half. Cooper Davis was 46 and a quarter. Yeah, Cooper Todd showing you why he wears a gold buckle around his belt. Cooper was showing off on that one. His right on Friday was right 300, then 301. Money is the bull. Oh, Davis, or excuse me, Pacheco rather hung up there on the side, much like we just saw of Davis. Six and 43, that clock stops here though, so it seems ride number 302 will have to wait. Yeah, and we talked about those historical moments. You go back two nights ago and you mentioned ride 300. This is the bull that he rode for that historical night. And again, like we talked about earlier, the, the opportunity to put these guys back on the same bulls doesn't always work out the way you have it planned. 48 hours later, this bull brings him down. But it's a different story today. And it is a completely different story. Lucas even the field board back jack. This time he finds the eight. Nashville is on the board. He finds the eight seconds and Nashville finds a new hope in life when it comes to this PBR team season. But you hear the challenge. That is a Carolina challenge looking to see if he still had his hand in that bull rope when they made the eight. We talked about it earlier. I mean, every one of these teams has one challenge. And if you think uh, if you think you're going to hold on to it till the very end, I don't know that that's a smart decision. If you see something that could turn the tide and shift that momentum in your favor, I think it's a smart move for these coaches to do it because you're only looking at five rides throughout the course of a game. And in those five rides, if something comes up and you can utilize that, I think it's a good move. You're going to watch that right hand. Does he still have contact with that bull rope when the clock hits eight seconds? This is going to be a much better angle. You can see right there. That is so yeah. close. Yeah, he's, made it. he's good, guys. He gets a score. And the indication from our replay official, Alan Jordan. And this crowd loving seeing a score. Now, just how big will it be? 88 and three quarters. Impressive out for Lucas and Backjack. And we've got a tied game. Impressive out for Joe Henry there, but an impressive weekend for the entire Nashville Stampede uh, locker room. They have really set their game up here. Had two surgeries, but then all of a sudden he popped up on Instagram, riding bulls, and Nashville said, let's get him. Great shot, the bull. And he does it again. Backs up his big ride and night to go and puts another one on the board. Rodolfo is on the rise for Nashville. Let's go, Bonson Rodolfo. What a bull ride on this cold shot.
both directions doesn't matter for this guy. This is a guy that was on their radar to put him on the practice squad. They didn't think they would draft him in the first five rounds, but they wanted him on the team just as depth of their roster. But with the broken femur, he kind of disappeared from everybody's radar. And again, it was an Instagram post of him riding bulls that made Justin McBride, Keith Ryan Carter, right in the Nashville Stampede go, hey, he looks like the guy we were looking at before. Now he looks like the guy they can count on every single game. What he's been able to do on so many levels. Boudreaux Campbell next for Carolina. Apple butter the bull. Campbell comes right back. Nashville gets one. So does Carolina. Boudreaux is on the board. That's a big ride for Boudreaux Campbell, who needed to get one rolling in his favor. And with Boudreaux, it just takes one to get that mojo, to get that swagger back, and then look out. Boudreaux's going to come fire. Yeah, Campbell was unable to find the whistle, though, a week, uh, week ago, rather, in Fort Worth. So huge turnaround for him here. 84 and a quarter, so not enough to take the lead, but wow, does it keep this one close. And you go back to that previous ride, Klotz and Rodolfo there for the Stampede, 87 and a quarter points. Then Boudreaux knowing that if he wants to keep his team in this game, he has to step up and do everything he possibly can. And he took everything that bull would give him. For 91 and a half points. Run, 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 run. Triplet gets forward and out of position, was it taking it to him for about four, and then you'll have to take us through the move, Sage, that ultimately got him just too far forward, that buck off time, five and 57. Yeah, it, it's the one thing that Matt Triplet does extremely well is get out over these bulls and take their power away. The one thing about safety meeting is you don't have to get out over him that much because he's backing up just a little bit. You can see Matt's really driving to that front end, setting his hips good. But as soon as he goes too far, it takes all the weight off your feet. Pulls him down forward. It's tough. Watch this. Thank goodness for that helmet and the face mask. You see the impact there. And another one. And then just absolutely comes crashing down. And Matt Triplett, one of the veterans of this team. The Nashville lineup. It's a long road to get there, but it is a possibility. But they have to get the win. They have to get a ride. Sticks it on one on a Sunday. Swearingen calling a day off for this guy. Charisma, no problem for the reigning world champ. He gets the ride and Carolina takes the lead. When your team has to have a score, who better than the reigning world champion to call on? Dalen Swearingen steps up and does it again. 89 and a quarter. Huge points to, gosh, really put a Nashville in a place where they've got to make big moves. But watch the end of this one because some scary moments. We saw it happen to Derek Kolbaba for Oklahoma, and now a swearing gin. Take us through this one, Sage. Yeah, the ending oh. of it's tough. You can see he takes a big shot. It hasn't been that long ago that Dalen took a shot similar to the, I mean, we've seen these guys get beat up all season long, and that is one Carolina cannot afford to lose their world champion. So Nashville's win streak of two comes to a quick end here as Carolina takes this one. And for Carolina, this is their first win in October. And a big one for that Cowboy squad. And it's a long road. But again, there is still a way for them to get a bye. But we got to see what happens here. You're taking a look at your event standings. So Cowboys move to one and two. Nashville to two and one. Looking for his second perfect weekend this season. Giving a little bit of everything in that eight second ride. Vera, though, is on the board. And guys, what about this? He has now ridden six in a row. Yeah, this might not be the biggest score, but my goodness, this was a man's bull ride from JRV. No timing, no feel, and JRV just grits it out.
Down to 15 right now. Big gets to zero. It's an automatic disqualification. Wasted days is more than ready. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Wow, scary moments after that buck off. So good to see Salgado on his feet and that very much because of what those three bullfighters were just able to do in a matter of moments. You heard Coach Ross Coleman calmly say they got him, they got him. He knew how good these guys are and how uh, these three work so incredibly well. But this is this bull jump starting right here in the gate. Well, if I'm Ross Coleman, I'm hitting the challenge button because Adriano nodded. The bull acted up. They didn't open the gate. There was a delay right there. Could be something to look at. That's scary right there. That spur getting caught in the rope. You see those bullfighters just laying on Adriano, whatever it takes to get in there and get him out of harm's way. And Coach Coleman is intently watching back along with Coach Luke Snyder at that replay, but it seems no challenge button was hit. Get up! Keep running! Keep running! Keep oh, Randolph off to the side, takes a hit. We are seeing so many of those here in the final day of the regular season. He'll leave here one for three in the games. Of course, still the bonus round left to go as well. And, uh, we'll have to wait and see who gets that opportunity for the Rattlers, but it came down just hundreds of a second before the whistle a day ago. And as you look at the Las Vegas Jim on buck off time here, five and oh one. Yeah, tough out right here for Brady. You can see that bull hesitate just a little bit, take a step forward, go back to the left, but you'll never question the effort from any of these guys here today. Man, this kid's taking a beating here all season long. He's been in some positions that were... Melt Mustache is the bull. Quick exit, quick hit to the ground as the bullfighters go to work. Two and 53, the buck off time. But you're hearing a challenge. Yeah, that's from Coach Ross Coleman, who's he down there. He hit himself barely. We'll take it. Try it. He hit himself. Just enough. Threw him off. Yeah, and see, that's he where I think a coach needs to be bad definitive. Bad Same bull. But we're going to try it. Huh? So, Sage, you were just saying with their last out, you thought maybe they should challenge. Uh, do you see what they're seeing here? Not at all. I think this is a reach from Ross. Definitely think the challenge would have been used better. Automatic DQ, not needing to worry about it. Keep running! Keep running! Keep running! Keep running! Keep running! Keep running! He does it again! Back to back to back! Qualified rides right here in Glendale. Debrito! Does it puts Texas back on the board? Not only is DeBrito perfect on the weekend, he is perfect on the back of High Plains Drifter. Exactly what he needed to be, and look out because some big time numbers are coming the way of the Texas Rattlers. 89 and a half, and Texas entered the weekend with only one qualified ride all season long in that number three spot. Seems they found their solution in DeBrito because now, well. He's gotten all three. Yeah, what a bull ride from the Brito right here. Bull getting it onto the right match, and he moved for move. So Texas, unstoppable, gets yet another win. They are perfect three weekends in a row. The event win, though, that's not the books yet. Still yet to be decided if they're going to pick up that third in a row. But they do pick up a huge one here, 177 to nothing. And we'll send it down to Allen standing by with head coach Cody Lambert. Well, Cody, when I'm in the back of the bucket shoot with your team, I sense a real brotherhood, a real sense of teamwork that maybe wasn't there earlier in the season. How has that come to be for these Rattlers? Well, this is the first time we've done this, and, we, and it's taken us a little while. We started slow, and and... I, I always knew we could get better, and, and that's still the plan. Ten wins in a row. It's hard to get much better than that, though I know there's still a few more out there you want. What kind of shape is this team looking toward the PBR team's finals? Well, we're, we're in good shape. Uh, we've got a couple guys that didn't get to come this week. Brady Olson 
is on the IR, and, and Daniel Keeping will be back at the finals, and we're hoping Brady might be back, and, and uh, we're going to just keep trying. Congratulations. Ten wins in a row, Cody Lambert and the Texas Rattlers, and he said they've got reinforcements coming for the finals. And already jumping on the phone to make sure those reinforcements are happening. Telling his rider, fans liking what they see. Austin there on the board. And if you're the Austin Gamblers that started saying a moment ago, you look at this as a new start to the game. Ezekiel Mitchell, one of the highest producing leadoff guys in the league, and he's the guy that gets them going yet again here today. It is now being told under official review. And it seems every time recently Mitchell goes, you hear coach saying, elbow down so for our newer fans why is that the message to Mitchell well born to sin not doing the play but going to the left today and the big thing is is whenever a bulls turning back away from your hand like that you need to get the weight on your inside leg dropping your elbow takes care of a lot of the things you need to do to get the weight over there Alan Jordan working overtime here today as a replay official you see him back there in the secluded replay booth he's gonna be looking at where that left arm makes contact with the bull in correlation with the clock. Did it happen after the eight seconds? That's the question. The answer is yes. The gamblers are gonna love this. And Zeke, do your dance. He's first on the board in this one. That's a big ride for Ezekiel Mitchell. He, he, he has had his ups and downs this season. And this was a nail biter for Zeke. So close. Let's watch the reaction. Coach Michael Gaffney and Zeke celebrate, fellas. That's a qualified ride. Consistency for the consummate professional that is Eduardo Aparecido. He continues to shine. In a team full of talent, it is a veteran that keeps him in the game. Colby Yates said at the beginning of the season, I look at him like a rock. You want a strong foundation, he's it for this team. And he is showing late in the season to be exactly what Yates said. 85 and a quarter. We talk about Ezekiel Mitchell where he's at in terms of leadoff guys. Eduardo's the number two guy in terms of that number two position. Parasuto staying in that number two spot and does what he has consistently done so well. Gas Hall from Backyard Bucket Bulls. Got to be on his A game. The celebration started with the Ridge Rider coaches early on in that ride, but then goes the opposite direction, 7.07 the buck off time. A little bit of a different trip this time around than what we saw earlier this weekend from that bull, wouldn't you say, Sage? Yeah, much different trip for him. You can see Vitor doing his best to track him. There is nothing smooth about Gas Hog right here. Traveling out through there, hopping, skipping. Finds a spot. Vitor just not in a good place. A few unpredicted early exits from Los Snacky of Arizona and Castle of the Gamblers, and it leaves us in a situation where it's going to come down to the final two rides. And they're he hasn't been able to do is go a perfect three for three all season long. And he wasn't able to do it here in. Five and 15 is going to be that buck off time. Come sailing over, but you gotta look at him putting up 87 and a half, then 91 and a quarter. So he had the confidence coming in. What gets him out of position and slingshotting around to the side? Yeah, he had the confidence. That bull just kind of pulled a dirty trick on him. Happy hour kind of stalling out the one time, taking a jump forward. Changes all timing, all momentum. 
Makes it tough. Pick your bull. Right. You're going to be riding at a clip at 80% for sure. Get ready. Get ready. The MVP winner does it yet again. Puts another one on the board for Austin. Is anybody surprised? Yeah. I think I can speak for everybody when no. I say absolutely not. <laughs> well, he sails to the whistle once again, and there was celebration on the Austin side. Well, but wait a minute. We very much saw conversation happening on the Arizona side, and now you're hearing the challenge. Yeah, wait a minute. It could get dramatic here. And it could be a case of a couple of things. Maybe Arizona saw something, or maybe they're just thinking, let's take a chance. We've got it. We, we've got the, the challenge. We haven't used it. It's the last ride. Let's see. Alan? It was one of, the, one of those things that we've got the challenge. He let go really close to the eight. Let's just take a chance and see. Did the clock start on time? All that stuff. So it's timing and hope. And that old saying that hope is not a good strategy. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Well, and it looks like it's going to be perhaps even closer than what was originally thought. It's marked right now 86 and a quarter. Now remember, either way, score. Arizona no score. needs the ride, but this makes it a much very different situation. So there it is, being called for a slap at 7 and 45, oh, and no score. And well, the look uh, it says it all. We've seen that one time this season. Yes. Frustration. Go, 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 go. forward with a touch tries to make the moves but is unable to do so he comes down early and austin wins it and not only wins the game but that means they are your number one team in the regular season they've got a bye you just heard coach michael gaffney say we're number one hey you can you gotta feel for the arizona ridge riders and the defeat here obviously is going to be heartbreaking but on the opposite side of the arena the excitement, not with just the Austin Gamblers, but think about who the hero was. Ezekiel Mitchell. Ezekiel Mitchell was the guy that got the job done for Austin. It wasn't one of those powerhouse calls from Castle or Jose B. Torlimi. It was Zeke. So take a look now at your Road to Vegas season standings. They have changed yet again here. Austin Gamblers have cemented their spot. They're the number one team heading into Las Vegas. Behind them, though, much to sort out in the bonus round, and we'll bring you all of that on the other side of the break right here from the desert. you got to jump in there. What an out from Cold Creek. Sends Marsilio flying at 5-22. and 22. But I'd love to see what a score like that would have been if he made the whistle. Yeah, you talk about the out from Cold Creek. What an out by Alex Marsilio. I mean, you mentioned it, how the fans love these bonus round bulls. I mean, it's nearly the equivalent of competition of a championship round. That's the caliber of athlete we're seeing. That is a hard crash landing, but this is a big time performance by this bull. And Garner's big time score is 46 and a quarter. So for newer fans, when you're getting bull scores like that, that would be what, say 93, 94, if he makes the whistle. Oh, at least, yeah. I mean, right. yeah, you're, that bull's doing everything you can ask of one. He's got to be perfect. Yeah. what you see on the board they're definitely going back to take a look at this one it was so close is he going to find it is it going to result in a qualified ride gonna be hard to find the extra time but what an effort from Eli Vassbinder you can tell he's exhausted and rightfully so guys Oklahoma's entire team should be physically and emotionally exhausted with what they have had to endure this season. Now, here's the deal, Kate. 
you got to keep in mind that if it's not a qualified ride, this bonus round separates itself according to buck off time. Oh, you're starting to see and feel some cheers and it is ever so close. And yes, now it could come down to uh, even those hundredths of a second could very much matter, but even if this is a buck off, do? think about this. Even if this is a buck off, though, Oklahoma Freedom moves into first place in this bonus round, guys. When you look at the buck off times previous to this one, no matter what the decision is, that buck off time is going to be important. Even in defeat, Oklahoma just took the lead in the bonus round. That could be huge. Seven, nine, nine. No. <laughs> 7.99, so being told they liked where the clock started. And he capitalized for his Rattlers. He's been so consistently good. And that's enough. He does it. And then finishes with the qualified ride. The Texas Rattlers pick up the bye as we head to Las Vegas. And they could even pick up the event win. It's going to come down to the Austin out for that. But you're looking at a team that floated around the bottom of the standings for the first half of the season. And now here they come surging under the helm of Cody Lambert, moving up the standings, winning 10 games in a row, and capping it off with the ride that gives them the bye as we go to Las Vegas. 91 and three quarter points for JRV and the Texas Rattlers, sealing up that position in Las Vegas. But this is the model of consistency for Texas. JRV coming in clutch. Biggest story of the regular season has to be the Rattlers and the way they've turned it around. Nobody hotter than Texas on a huge win streak. Everything is falling into place for Texas. A 92 from Lucas Davino will get the job done. Medicine Man is the ball. He's been 91 on him. But he's down. So that is that in Texas. In the ever so critical ride from Joao Ricardo Vieira, that gives them the event win. They win three in a row heading to Vegas where they get a bye. Would you have ever believed what we're seeing right now? The, the turnaround we keep talking about in the Texas Rattlers, the game uh, winning streak that they are on. Huge ride from that man. And there's a lot of years between those two right there, Edgene and Joao, and I mean that respectfully because those two veterans are leading this Texas team to victory. And a lot of success under the lights of Las Vegas. And as we get there, take a look at your Road to Vegas season standings. That's where we will see you next. Austin Gamblers, Texas Rattlers. Those are your teams that get those first round buys. And with that, you'll see them seated on our championship bracket. This is not virtual. This is now set in stone as we get to Las Vegas and T-Mobile Arena. Austin and Texas, they have earned that first night of competition to rest, relax, and see what everybody else does. PBR Team Series Championship coming up Las Vegas, November 4th through the 6th. And that is where we will see you next. Well, for Alan Bestwick, Sage Kimsey, Matt West, and our entire crew, I'm Kate Harrison. Thanks for watching.